Hi, I'm Sarah, and today I'm going to talk about a City API that I built using KTOR, Exposed, SQL Lite, and Coin for dependency injection. Before I dive into the code, I'd like to go ahead and give you a little bit of background, the idea of the project, and what the database and city data actually look like. So here's my city data. I basically have zip, latitude, longitude, city, state, population, county, and time zone. And the whole idea is to allow users to be able to pull this data in different ways. For example, they could pull a list of city names by city name prefix, and this would be great for an autofill feature. If a user wanted to start typing out a city name, the API would pull down all the cities that match that city name, or potentially a client could send a zip code and it would pull back the city information, or clients could simply pull a list of states, which is really handy for forms, you know, and filling out a user addresses and things like that. So to start out, my user table is really, really simple. Basically, I just want users to be able to sign up with an email address. And when they do, they'll be assigned a user ID automatically, and it's also going to insert the create date. I'd also like users to have the option to be able to have multiple API keys and multiple clients. For example, I'll actually be using this API in a weather app that I'm building, and I'd like to have an API key for my development environment and also my production environment. So this way I can have my user table and a one-to-many relationship to the different types of apps that I have. So how does this work? I'll head over to Postman and show you. Now I'm here in Postman and I have my API up and running. It's set to go to localhost on port 8080 and I have a route called users slash create and this is how I'm creating my new users. The object is really simple. You just send the email address. So let me go ahead and send it. There you go, the response comes back. The user ID is two. I have my email, create date. These are the apps. I do not have that feature integrated just yet, but it will return an array of the apps that are associated with that user ID. And it also returns some built-in errors if any occur. So let's see if I can make that happen. Let's go ahead and try to insert this user again. And this is great. The API responds back with an error code that the email exists, and it says this email address is already registered. So what if a user sends JSON that's improperly formatted or it doesn't match what the API is expecting as far as the JSON body? Let's go ahead and try that out. I can show you what that looks like too. So in this example in the body, I've just put a field that doesn't exist in the user data class, and let's go ahead and see what that looks like. This is great, the API responds back, and it says invalid user, and this is an invalid user object, check your JSON values. And along with this message, they also get an empty shell of what the actual user object should look like when they send the data. Now that you've seen how the API works, Let's head to IntelliJ and look at the actual code that makes this all possible. So I'm going to start out with my build.gradle and the dependencies that I've used. First of all, I added the exposed dependencies. I also added the dependencies that I needed for SQL Lite. Uh, the status pages, this is really cool. So that what this does on my routes, it gives me custom error exception handling. And that's why in Postman, I was able to say, if you send me bad JSON, I could really control the way the errors came back to the user. So actually, let me show you that real quick. So under my plugins directory, I have status exceptions, and I have configure status exceptions. And what this dependency gives me, um, here I create the sample user, which defines what a good user structure should look like. And then, Basically, in this install the status pages, I'm going through and I'm catching the types of exceptions that I can get on every single route. And I said, if the calls is a serialization exception, which means you cannot read that JSON user object that's being passed to the API, then I want you to respond with a bad request and send the sample user so that users can see what the user object should look like. I'm probably going to expand on this in the future, but right now I'm really happy how it's working and I like it a lot. It's a really cool feature of KTOR. So back to my dependencies, uh, I've also integrated logging, 
I've integrated bcrypt for, eventually I'd like to start encrypting data, but I have not implemented that just yet, but it's there when I'm ready for it. And then finally, coin for dependency injection. I've created the dependencies that I needed, and one really important thing that I'd like to mention is if you want to use coin with Ktor, your Java JDK has to be at least JDK 11. So what you want to do is you want an IntelliJ, you want to click on File, Project Structure, and then under SDK, here you can pick your JDK version. Uh, and like I said, it has to be at least 11. Right now I'm using 18, and I'm using the Amazon version. There's a lot of different vendors to choose from. If you like, I think OpenJDK is probably the most popular. I use the Amazon because from what I've read, the build is optimized for performance. You get releases more consistently without actually having to upgrade to the next version. So go ahead, do your research, find out which vendor you like best. But in this case, I'm using Amazon. So once you get all that configured, you should be able to use Coin properly and install it correctly, just like you'd install any other plugin. So that pretty much covers the dependencies. Now let's head over to my util package. I've set up some error codes for the entire application, and these I can use anywhere I like. I started out using a seal class, but I actually like them as an enum better. It just keeps everything very simple. And as you could see when I was running the Postman queries and it came back with certain error codes, these are the error codes that it returns. So I have invalid user, invalid email, and basically this is all included in the user response. And just to show you, I also have a global results class. This is a seal class. And what it allows me to do is say, was something a success? And if it was a success, I can return the object that was created from the transaction, whether that be from a use case or from my DAO. And I can also specify an error if it occurred. And within that error, I pull in the error code, which gives me the valid error code and the user response. So that's the basic application structure. Now let's head over to the data layer. First, to start out, I'm creating my SQLite database factory. And this is just standard stuff. I'm initializing uh, the driver, the JDBC URL, the database. Uh, as you can see, my database is called cities. And in this file, I've also included the suspend function for dbquery. By default, exposed transactions are blocking. So what you want to do is you want to create this little helper function and it's going to start every query in its own coroutine and its own thread and that way you won't block the main application thread. Next I'll go ahead and show my table structure. So here's the user object right here, very very simple. I've got the user ID which is set to auto increment. I've got the email, now this is very important, I've set this as a unique constraint. So that means if you try to insert a duplicate email, it's actually going to throw an exception in my DAO. And I'll show you in a minute how I handle that. I've also got the user create date, and I'm setting the primary key to the user ID. And then here's the corresponding user data class. Again, very simple, just the user ID, the email, the create date. And then these are the apps. So this could be the development version of the app or the production version. And again, I haven't integrated this yet, so we'll just leave that alone for now. Before I show you my user DAO, I'd actually like to show you my use cases first and show you how I process the user object coming in from the client as JSON data. So let me head over here to my domain, use cases, and insert new user. The insert new user use case takes a validate user email use case along with the user DAO. So let me go ahead and show you what the validate user email use case looks like. I have a reg regular expression that checks to make sure that the email matches, that it's a valid email, it has the at sign and the proper structure. And I basically check if the email is blank and make sure that it matches the regular expression. And if it doesn't, I return the global error uh, sealed class that basically says you have an invalid email. Otherwise, I return a success, and just in this case, it's a Boolean value true. I don't actually return the object, the user object back. So back in the insert user use case, 
if everything went well there, then I call my DAO. And but but before I do, I make sure to set the create date to now. So that's already going to be filled when it goes to the DAO. And now I'll actually show you what that looks like. So let me go here. This is the interface and it's really important to use interfaces because let's say I decided to change my backend and not use SQL Lite anymore. This will give me the option to create my implementations. Uh, so let me go ahead into the implementation here. All right. And here, um, again, I'm returning my global success or error class and I'm running my query. So from my users table, I'm calling insert and I'm inserting the email and the create date that was created from the use case. And what I'm doing here is getting single or null. So if it does successfully insert the record, I go ahead and convert it to my user object and call it a success. Otherwise, we have some kind of unknown database error and it returns an error back to the response. Now this is the cool part. I'm catching the exception here and exposed is really cool. It exposes different types of SQLite error codes that I can get. And again, this is why it's very important to use an interface because these errors that I'm getting are actually custom to SQLite and it's very cool. Let me show you here what I can do. So I have access to all these exceptions. And of course, you know, I'm probably not going to use all of them, but it's really nice that they're here. Uh, because for instance, when I, let me go back here, I added the unique constraint to the email field. So that means that it'll automatically fall to here. And I can say, if it's a constraint violation, send me this specific email exists error code, which is so cool. So it just goes right to there and it says, okay, this email already exists. You can't do that. And then it responds back to the client. Otherwise, again, I can just say this was a generic database error. We don't know what happened. Try again. So now I'm going to go back to my insert new user use case. And this is really cool. So everything after I go through all of the checks, I have a user response that I've defined. And this is what this looks like. It's serializable and it returns a user along with the errors. And right now I've created a list. It's pretty much usually only one error, but I wanted to have the option to add multiple errors in case that happens. It hasn't happened yet, but we'll see. So this is the global. And then here's a data class that just has the response errors, which basically takes that enum and it takes the error code and the error message that's returned to the user. So that's the response. Now let's head over to routing where we actually handle this input from the clients. Uh, so I've created this in its own file. And basically in this file, this will be all the user routes. So here's my path that we saw in Postman under users create. And the first thing it does is it receives or null. And if it's null, it's going to return a bad request. But remember, I also have these exceptions going. So if anything else happens, then I can, con I can have more control of the exception with my status pages. I love that. I just think it's such a cool feature. Uh, so let me go back to my route here. So now I'm validating my user object. Uh, and, and this is where I actually call the use case. So I'm getting the request from the client, I'm getting the JSON object. It's being parsed. It's being serialized. And then I'm inserting the new user. And if everything was good there, if the errors are empty, then actually return the created status code. Otherwise send a bad request and back to the response. We send the status and we send the user object, which again is going to have the user and any errors that happened, if any. And finally, last but not least, I would like to show you the coin integration and how I handle dependency and uh, implementation. So this is really neat. Let me go into my application file. This block right here is what I had to do before I implemented coin. I basically had to instantiate each object and pass them into my insert new user use case 
because it takes them as constructors. Uh, so instead, with the magic of coin, I'll go in here again. This is in the plugins folder if you want to check it out. And it's in its own module, so I can isolate everything and keep everything organized. And here I install coin under the application. So I add the logging and I have a city module and the module is defined down here. And as you can see, this was that same block of code, but it's just using coin magic. So here I say, I want to use my user DAO interface, create a singleton, and this is my user DAO implementation. So now coin knows how to create that object. The same thing with my validate user email use case. So coin knows how to create that object. All is good. And then finally, when I call my insert new user use case, I simply call get and get because the insert new user is expecting the validate user email and the user DAO and coin knows how to create both of these things. So really that's all you need to do. And this module right here replaces everything that I had to do here. Very cool. I like it a lot. I like coin. I've used dagger hilt. I might like coin a little bit better, but we'll see. So that pretty much wraps everything up. Uh, just to recap the project structure, I try to follow clean architecture as best as I can. Sometimes I do what's best for the project. So I don't do everything exactly, you know, to the specification. But if you look at my main folder here, I've got a data layer, a domain layer, plugins, which is where we have coin and routing and security and all that good stuff. And then I have utils, which is just basic date time handling, all of my result classes. And then finally the application and the user routes. And also I've put all of this out on GitHub. Right now it's an active project. I'm still working on it. So if you want to follow along, don't use the main branch because I can't guarantee that it's going to compile correctly. Uh, right now I am working in the user interface branch. So go ahead and check out that branch. Everything should be what I just went through and it should work well for you. And I'd love to know what you think and thanks for watching.